Vasudevaya Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Just a little instruction not to leave the, the books on the, on the ground as well, that they should be, you know, if, if possible on one of these, but at least maybe on a cushion, you know, uh, that would be great, or if you can, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent, thank you, yeah, that's okay. um, so, we, we are going to start over, um, I'm not sure what page is on those books, but it's, it's chapter 2, verse number 49, I'm actually just going back a little bit uh, from that because uh, it just it leads on to this week, really. Um, uh, thank Dina for a very nice class last week and also next week, by Christmas Grace. You're leaving? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be um, in, in London next week, yeah. But yeah, but it'll be great if you can. Oh, Are you going to be free for next week? Yeah. Next week? Next Monday. Um, let me just see. Yeah, so this is, has everyone got it? It's verse 49 in chapter 2. Sorry, what page did I get? Um, what page is it on that book? Is that, you know, I have a different page numbers. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, oh, which, which, which uh, white one? Sorry, I'll find it. 249. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, read maybe, sometimes we read the Sanskrit, but a lot of the times we'll just read the English, you know, sure. just, just to make it up. So I'll read the first few myself from 248 to 251. So, um, and then and then, then we'll all read the verse. Um, Funny, the first one is quite interesting. I have a question. What is what is yoga? What do you mean? What is it? Connection. Oh. Connection. Yeah, to link. To yeah. link. Yeah, very good. But by uh, Krishna says here, uh, he, he, this is this is Krishna's an another definition of yoga, which is in interesting. But your your definition is the principle when the Prabhupada used actually yoga means to link or to relink with God, basically. Yoga Uchate, that's what Prabhupada says, is called yoga. So this is another definition. Perform your duty equipoised, O Arjuna, abandoning all attachment to success or failure. Such equanimity is called yoga. So <coughs> in this instance, it's equanimity. Without abandoning attachment to success or failure. And that's what Krishna says. And then, uh, Odananjaya, keep all abominable activities far distant by devotional service, and in that consciousness surrender unto the Lord. Those who want to enjoy the fruits of their work are misers. A man engaged in devotional service rids himself both of good and bad reactions. Therefore, here's another one. Um, um, Therefore, strive for yoga, which is the art of all work. Is this interesting? All these different definitions. Um, by thus engaging in devotional service to the Lord, great sages or devotees free themselves from the results of work in the material world. In this way, they become free from the cycle of birth and death and attain the state beyond all miseries. What would be another um, word for attaining the state beyond all miseries? What would that be? Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Liberation. It, yeah, and it's, but it's also a place. Back to Godhead, you know, and because that, that he put, Alpha puts that in brackets in, in, in the verse, you know, by going back to Godhead. So here, Krishna, although in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna doesn't give into extensive uh, descriptions of what the spiritual world is like. He doesn't give all the descriptions in Bhagavad Gita, but he, he definitely tells you about it and it's there. And then in, in the next work, which is the, the Bhagavatam, the top 
section there. That's where all the descriptions about the spiritual world are like, you know. One good Krishna, Parastha Sanatu Baba Yogyakta Sanatana. In other words, that there is a, there's a transcendental word. And this is what, what, uh, what Bhagavad Gita st states, you know. It explains that it's there, you know. It's okay. So it makes you kind of, hmm, there, let me find out about it. You know, it gives you that kind of impetus to try, to, to, try to, to, to learn more about it, you know. Okay, so I'll go to, uh, are you ready, Lord? Uh, number 52. When your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion, you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. said, oh Krishna, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is just merged in transcendence? What does he speak? And what is his language? What does he see? What does he walk? The Supreme Personality of God has said, <coughs> O Partha, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind, thus purified, finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. One who is perfected the mind, even at least uh, three points in the way, or elated when there is happiness, and who is free from attachment, fear and anger, is called a state of steady mind. In the material world, mm -hmm. one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, neither praising it or despising it, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. When he was able to withdraw his senses from sense objects, as a tortoise draws its limbs within the shell, is firmly fixed in perfect consciousness. today because we're going from 50 to 59 but I added in a couple of extra ones. Okay, I have just one question to see who is who is alert or who is listening and I won't ask Tina. Um, what was the animal that was described here? There was one animal described. You don't have to really ah, have to be listening. So no one knows. The tortoise. Yes. So keep thinking of the tortoise. It's what it's something to meditate on because he's an important character, important animal to remember in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> I have one question. Like one who is able to withdraw his sense from sense of object as the tortoise. So how can one withdraw himself from sense object, which is inherently what human do? They withdraw themselves? Yes. How did, I mean, how did they do it? I mean, yes. what's, what's your question? How did they withdraw themselves from the sense objects? Yes, yeah. one who is able to withdraw his sense from sense yeah. object, uh, as a tortoise, draw his 
brings within the shell is yeah. only fit in consciousness. Yeah. That's the question. Yeah, how, 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 did, how do you do that? Yeah. Um, you might come to that because that's coming towards just the, the end of the talk. So if you see if you if you wait for it for that till we come to the end, okay? Sure. I, I would just I mean and listen because Prabhupada has got a very very good explanation of it actually. It's and it's, it's very nicely explained. Actually. So keep the suspense going, you know. <laughs> but um, so the reason I went back on the, on those first verses um, was. Uh, because uh, it is the, the living entity having to live in this world where there are dualities, you know. Do you know what I mean? That's not, I mean, I must say, my education when I was from, from the time I was a kid was to be good. You know, you should be good, you should be a good person, blah, blah, you know, from the time I was four or five. This was always kind of drummed into me. And, and if I was good, then good things will happen to me, you know. That was the kind of the, the quid pro quo. That was the, the deal. If you're really good, good things will happen to you. In Krishna consciousness, uh, Krishna is, ex is explaining something even higher than that. You know, is that even when it's good, but it's also not good, it will happen. Do you know, even if you're a good person, you're going to get the dualities are going to come. Why? Could anyone say why that might be the case? Because of. Karma. karma, exactly. Yeah, it's because of karma because we don't see the very the clarity of why things happen to us now. We can't actually work it out. We can't just get a very clear explanation. This happened to me because I did this. There is there is semblance there. There is cause and effect there, and sometimes we can see it, but sometimes we can't see it. But if when we can't see it, then we accept something. That it is there for it's not there for no reason. It is there because of something that we did previously. So that that is a huge step forward in Krishna consciousness, actually, just in that in that changing or in that teaching to um, to ourselves, but also to um, you know when, when people are coming to Krishna consciousness in the beginning, or even to our children. You know, it's it's a little hard because our tendency is is to want something. You know, I want a result. I'm I'm a good person. One of, one of my good friends in, in Krishna Consciousness, um, this is a very interesting story, and I talk, showed you about the, 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 the idea, I'll give you two examples of karma. And he was, to me, one of the best devotees in the UK, Yatra, you know. Fact, one of the very best devotees. He did so much service for Prabhupada. He was wonderful with devotees. He gave a lot of time to everybody, and he had a very good nature. He joined Krishna Consciousness when he was only 17. A few years ago, he got um, he, he he had some little problem, and um, and he went to a doctor, and it turned out that he had this uh, absolutely malignant uh, cancer, basically, uh, and uh, it was it was kind of shattering for him because he had all these different programs going on, Krishna conscious programs, you know, he was in charge of different. Um, Namahatas, and literally there were hundreds of people who who were kind of depending on him, and um, and he told me himself because he's very honest. He said at that time I was thinking, why I'm one of the good guys? Why did this happen to me? You know, <laughs> you know he was he was he was thinking like that, but then just when it happened, but just by chance, the very very uh, topmost doctor in the specific cancer that he had came uh, uh, into the manor. And just uh, and talk to him practically, uh, literally days after he was diagnosed, and he was going to go into one specific type of treatment, and then he said, "No, no, come to me." And he came to him. He isolated the cancer and was able to actually rid him of it straight away. You know, and it was it was quite you know so, because he tells that story himself a lot how. He was thinking, you know, why did this happen? You know, I'm trying to do this and trying to do that. But then Krishna <laughs> was also thinking in a way as well of sending him that person. And another example, actually, which is very recent, and um, was one, one lady actually. She wanted. She was in. I think it was in New Vrindavan, and she wanted to. Um, they, they were there at a program, but she had to go back very quickly because of an emergency in her work. 
And Dumidab is quite isolated place. It's in, uh, in Virginia, but it's way out in the, in the mountains. There was one person going back the next day. And um, so he said, oh, it's OK. I can take you. I can take you. And she said, oh, that's brilliant. I can go back the next day. And he said, I'll pick you up at 10.30. So the next day, she was ready to go. And you know, it was quarter past 10. She was there on time. Half past 10, quarter to 11, 11, half 11, quarter to 12. She was going to miss her flight. You know, so she rang up the person, and the person said, "Oh, I completely forgot." You know, and she became really angry. You know, and uh, she, she just, you know, she said, "Why did you do this? You know, I needed to get here. You told me you'd be there." And he said, "He said I can't come back now. I can't come back because I have to get where I'm going." But then the phone, and um, so she had to stay another day. And the next day, and um, she was kind of, she was getting ready to go, and then her friend said, "Oh, did you hear what happened? The person who was driving." You know? There was a went to drive the other day. She didn't know the, the story of the person was telling her. Uh, well, actually, uh, he, he just had a very serious accident. And all, he wasn't hurt himself, but the passenger side of the, of the accident was demolished, you know? So, you know, it was, we don't always know why the things are happening, but there is, there is, there's always, and, and this is the whole point of cause and effect, there's always reasons why things happen, you know? There always are reasons there. We may not be able to see them, but because, um, like for instance, the point that the person I was listening to a class of person making this point, and he made this point that, um, like science always talks about, uh, oh yes, this, we, this happened because of the law of this or the law of that and the law of the other, and when they cannot, uh, when they cannot come up with a solution, they say, oh, we'll discover it in the future. In the future, I'm sure there is some law which, which, which will explain it. You know, that's how they, that's how they describe it. But you know, they 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 they, they don't also see, they they think you know they're putting it forward to some future situation you know, but actually, in Krishna consciousness we understand that, that that Krishna is in control of all of these things and that Krishna is the cause of all causes, and that uh, in fact that they believe in the cause and effect, but but actually we can also see that the cause and effect of Krishna being there is also very much to do with. Uh, with spirituality and with logic as well. So, in other words, if they followed their logic true, if they, they would believe in God. But because they're not sincere in, in following cause and effect true, then they, 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 they become atheistic or they're, they're not sincere in their, in their pursuit of truth. Yeah, like, like if I understand well, it's like you would say that it's, uh, it's okay, uh, when it's knowing or when it's, when it's knowing, it's the cause. Because yeah. it's why it's knowing. Yeah. Is it like here's the weather? Why yeah. is the weather? Yeah. They're always talking about the cause and effect. So, so why is there an existence? Yeah. Why are we here? Yeah. You know, it's, oh, there's no, there's no reason. There's cause, there's, in other words, everything that to do with the science has to do with um, cause and effect, and it's uh, that, that that that's that's what they say. But uh, but yet, when it comes to the most important thing about why we're here, they say, oh, it's, there's no reason. It, just, it doesn't happen. All, there's no such thing as God. There, there's no reason why we're here. You know that they make these kind of assertions which are totally illogical you know so there is a reason why we're here but they don't know the cause yet you know but we but we do actually know the cause and, uh, and krishna explains in bhagavad gita all about what the cause is and why we why we're here so this is this is the primacy of this type of knowledge which isn't necessarily taught in the universities but this is the this is the highest knowledge raja vijay raja guyan palitran paramutamam it's nine chapter verse number two, where Krishna says that this is the king of knowledge. It's the most secret of all secrets, and it is um, uh, it is everlasting and it is joyfully performed. Because and because it gives direct perception of the self by real realization. In other words, we can actually learn to see who we actually are. It's not it's not actually some kind of um, vague. Uh, expression. No, we actually get to understand who we are, who the soul is, what the soul is, you know, and then we learn how to uh, behave on the platform of the soul, which is we, we, we root out from our heart the various things like lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness, envy. These are all the things which are preventing us from seeing. But well, this and, and this is ultimately what the yoga processes were originally, as we talked about, the soul. The soul actually gets to see itself in yoga. That's what those movements are meant to try to bring about, so the soul is deeply poisoned and can see. 
but the, 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 that with the philosophy really gives us a very clear, you know, very clear picture and determination to get there as well. So that's, the, that's the, just the first point I wanted to make on those particular things. And um, Krishna sends these. Krishna's made this world. He sends this happiness and distress, and uh, honor and dishonor, fame and infamy. You know, he sends them to you, whether you like it or not. And it's just how you react to them. And Krishna's very kind to you. Look, if you, if you think of Queen Kunti, she was the most, the greatest queen that was ever there. And but she asked for calamities. You know, she wanted the negatives because when the negative things were happening then she thought of Krishna. When things were kind of happy, then she forgot about Krishna, you know. So, but that's, we're not, necess not necessarily on that platform yet. It'll take maybe a little while. But, uh, but still, we should, if, if negative things are happening to us, we should use them to the best of our ability to try to be Krishna conscious. We, we should practice our humility, practice our tolerance. And, and there was one, um, one thing I learned over in, um, in the, in the courses over in India that recently is that you know, we're, we're trying to practice to be tolerant of, of other people but actually we should understand that other people have to be very tolerant about us <laughs> you know, it's something we forget you know uh, although we, we could make the argument that yeah, I'm, I'm very good devotee I make, I make everybody tolerant of me you know? but um, it's something which we also have to remember you know, that, that people do have to be tolerant of us as well Okay, so um, just just in, in text fifty one, which is the first one for today, and um, some points that Krishna Krishna makes there, and Prabhupada makes in the purport is that in general, um, people try to adjust their material situation in order to become happy. Um, why do people go to university? They want to get an education. If they're in pursuit of knowledge, they want to get more knowledge. If they're just more materially based, they just want to get a, a better job so they'll have more money, so they can live in a better area, so they can have a um, better association for themselves, for their wife and their children better school to go to, and nicer neighbors, and so called. You know, so people are making a huge endeavor to try to be happy in the world. And that's, okay, it's not, it's not necessarily wrong, but, in this, it's just, but it depends on what way you want to do it. But, um, but in general, that's, that isn't, isn't the correct way to do it, because, um, because in the world, we're, we're not meant to be happy in the material world. <laughs> Sorry, for breaking a few things. Go ahead. No, it, it's Krishna is just explaining, and see, this is the thing that the knowledge that's been given here is, it's the truth, you know. It's not trying to flatter anybody, or it's not trying to say nice things to people so so the person who's speaking will get something nice in return. And you know, Vedanta Maharaj always jokes uh, about getting a, a, a nice prasadam at the end of it. You know, he says it gives a nice class here. <laughs> But then, uh, but it's not. That's not the reason that, that we say these things, or that Krishna says these things. Uh, but it's it's so that we get a picture of the truth, so that we can actually learn how to act properly. You know, so that we, we know how to make the correct decisions in life. And um, like for instance, if it's your karma to make a lot of money, have a nice job, that's fine. You know, but if it's if it's not your karma, don't worry too much. You know. You just be satisfied with what you have, you know, mm -hmm. um, because that's not what's needed to make advancement in spiritual life, you know. Like you have all these. I mean, I listened to, I looked at them myself, you know, about um, motivational speakers. You can also be. I mean, I, I I I typed into them one time, and I've got six of them constantly who send me emails. Now, I haven't looked at them for the last three years, like you know, but it's constant, you know, and they're all telling you. And, and each time, like, they, they wait a few weeks and then they ask for money, do you know? That's how, that's how they make the money, you know? <laughs> but um, it, it's, it, it's just, um, if it, they're not teaching you the higher inner development, which is that you learn how to, uh, to rid yourself of those things, 
for those kind of Greek equations. You just, you know, you learn how to uh, how to internally dialogue, and you learn how to internally function. Um, uh, although I wouldn't focus too much on it, sometimes probably would say internal, external. You know, you wouldn't make the difference because because this is the point that we're going to come to is that, uh, and, and this is the answer to your question actually is that um, by performing devotional service, you know, uh, that is we're using our senses, but we're not using them for ourselves. You know, we're we're using our senses to please Krishna, to please God. And that, that's um, that is that's the that is the real yoga, you know, to find out what is your duty uh, in life. Um, it, it doesn't have to be too uh, too elaborate, but our main duty in life is to is to serve Krishna, is, is to find out what Krishna wants you to do. We, we're born with a certain a certain amount of talents, you know. We've got we've got those talents, so we should use them in Krishna's service, but. Use the ones that you have. Don't worry about somebody else having them. You know, or having other talents. They can use their talents. Best, greatest, if you can cooperate. If you can cooperate. If we can cooperate to serve Krishna together. That is, that is topmost. That really, that's what Krishna pleases. That's what pleases Krishna the most, actually. And Baba's last instruction was, your love for me will be shown by how you know, much you cooperate to, uh, to keep this Krishna consciousness movement going when I've left, you know. So, so cooperation is higher than, than our own kind of view of how things should be, you know. Cooperation, sometimes we have to cooperate with each other, each other, each other. we may not always agree, but, if, but by, by, that, by that activity of being, of, of being civil and being kind and being, uh, you know, and working with each other, that actually has a huge, powerful effect. We don't, we, we can't, we, we don't, we cannot estimate the effect. Um, I hope you don't wouldn't mind Medina uh, just mentioning the whole Polish tour, how mm. that functions. Like, like this is literally hundreds and hundreds of devotees, and they move tons and tons of machinery equipment from day to day and day out for literally for at least four to six weeks every year. Is it long? Yeah, about eight weeks. Eight weeks. You know, you can't do that unless people function in, in, in a very and nobody's paid. And nobody's paid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tour where I go every summer. Just mm. to a it's amazing. <laughs> and uh, because people just love it. Because they, they're getting a higher taste. And that's something which we're comfortable with the end as well. You know, that, that's a first. Uh, as we're coming to the end of the, of the chapter, there is, um, I'm going to, because it's important that devotees actually learn verses. It's actually important. Um, I'm going to, we're going to have a um, next week. Uh, Dean will speak on the last, uh, the last uh, verses and uh, of the chapter, and then the, next, the following week we will go on to chapter three. But in in, in the intervening time, I, I wanted everyone to uh, to pick out their three favorite verses. From this chapter, the three favorite verses, you know, ones that kind of just resonate with you, or that just kind of mean something more than the others. The others, the, everything is important, you know. But uh, if you fi find those those verses, and then if you could, then if you could learn those verses, that would be even better, you know. Learn both the Sanskrit and the English, that would be even better. But anyway, let's take it one step at a time. Just at least pick out the verses, and then. Then on that fall, not next week, but the following week, we will uh, hope, hope everything turns up. Because usually when there's a uh, home, homework, no one turns up there. But uh, <laughs> so pick out the pick out the three verses that you like the most from there. Or you don't even have to be just three that you want to speak about, or just not even speak, but just to tell us what they are. That would be very very good. Um, before and then we we'll start on chapter three. And um, so. That's what Krishna says. Trying to adjust the root of action to become happy, you can't do it because everywhere in the material world, from the highest planet down to the lowest, all are places of misery where in repeated birth and death can take place. Abrahma, Bhuvana, Loka, Punar, Avartana, Arjuna. I don't know the next two lines, but. Mopeta, Tukantaya, Punar, Chanamana, Vidyate. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 Dina, could you say that again? I just love to hear those verses. Abraham and Puva. Puva Nalaka Punar Avartino Artu Puva Puva Punar Avartino Arjuna Ma Mupetia to Kantea Punar Chan Mana Vidya Te. Never take birth again in this world. Yeah. That's really nice. So, so um, now I'm going to go on to the next two verses. Uh, sorry, sorry, just before I go on to the first 52, just say that. To know one's constitutional position means to know the sublime position of the, of the Lord. So that's why it's important for, se for self-realization, because if we know who our self is, then we actually we will get that vision to know who Krishna is as well. You know, that's, that's really what we, that's also what we want. You know, we want to see who God is, we want to see God, we want to experience God. You know, we want to reciprocate with God, because uh, God is very... Um, uh, reciprocating, you know, he, he reciprocates with us, you know, that's the nature of Krishna. Um, he's responsive. Krishna responds to us. He doesn't always respond when we want him to or when we think he should, but he responds to us in his own good time. And when he responds, we know it's him. <laughs> we, know, we know it's Krishna. Okay, and. Um, so the next two verses are quite interesting. When your intelligence is passed out of the dense forest of delusion, this is 52 and 53, uh, you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. When your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas, and when it remains fixed in the trance of self-realization, then you will have attained the divine consciousness. So, Rina, is your, is your mind still disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas? We don't, we don't read the Vedas that much to know whether it's disturbed or not. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I, do, I do hear you. But, uh, um, yeah, I do hear you. Yeah. But you have my attention. No, no, I do. I know I, know, I, know I understand that. I can see it. That's fine. But, um, so this verse mainly also dis dis describes the, the, the Vedic process and Krishna speaking to people at that time more so because they were listening. And the Vedas deal mainly with the three modes of nature. And the, the Vedas tend to deal with uh, economic development, uh, sense gratification, uh, um, uh, oh sorry, uh, religion, uh, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. But, but these are to do with mainly with the body. So the Vedas are, the Vyasa Dev made the Vedas in that way to try to, you know, to try to help people along the path. He, he gave them a kind of, it's, it's like a preliminary kind of way. But, but, but the problem is, is that people get attached to the Vedas. They don't really, really understand that it's, it's only there to, to give them an understanding of how to make gradual, gradual improvements. And, but they, they, they don't go to the next stage, which is beyond the Vedas. You know? You know, and, that's, uh, and that's what Krishna consciousness is. And Prabhupada then explains what the highest perfection is, is to be uh, eternally the servant and to render service. That's, that's, the, that's the highest perfection. Because ultimately, um, Krishna says, it's quite an interesting verse, and it's in 15, 7 or 15, uh, 15 uh, um, where Krishna says, of all the Vedas, I, you know, I am to be known. In fact, I am the compiler of the Vedas. Did, I just wondered, did anyone ever hear that verse before? 15, 15. Yeah. It's, uh, I read it because it's a nice one. You know, it's, um, or, yeah, it's just, Sarvasya chaham vidi sani vishto matak smita gyanam apo mincha daischa sarve raham eva vedyo vedanta krit veda videva chaham I am seated in everyone's heart and from me come remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta and I am the knower of the Vedas. So, that's what Krishna is saying, is that, you know, we serve him, we serve Krishna. He's beyond the Vedas, you know. And, and uh, so that's what Krishna is saying in that verse, that, they, that the highest perfection beyond all the Vedic scripture, in that sense, of the Vedic, um, the flowery language of the Vedas, is, is, is um, Krishna consciousness. Now here's, here's the important question from Arjuna. Can you remember what, what 
Arjuna asks a question here, and I assume, do you remember what the question is? I love putting it on. Arjuna asks Krishna, what does he ask? Him? Uh, how does the person yes. know uh, Krishna consciousness come? Yes. And his how does he act? It's four things actually. So he does four. One is his. How does he speak? Speech, yeah. yeah. That's probably one of the most important. What is his language? That's the second. And the third is how does he it's sit nice. and walk? Yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Uh, uh, and then this is uh, this is very interesting. And Prabhupada says one can know one can know the specific symptoms from Bhagavad Gita. Most important is how the man in Krishna consciousness speaks. For speech is the most important quality of any man. It is said that a fool is undiscovered as long as he does not speak. And certainly a well dressed fool can be can be cannot be identified until he speaks. Prabhupada says, He's very, very sharp. But as soon as he speaks, he reveals himself at once. And here's Prabhupada's said the punchline. The immediate symptom of Krishna conscious man is that he speaks only of Krishna and of matters relating to him. Other symptoms then automatically follow as stated. Um, I'm on my so I can figure out what I'm saying. When I was in India, actually, I was, um, I was following a very good regimen of uh, of practice, you know, and but at a certain point I started to uh, I was attracted to socialize a little bit, you know. Now I wasn't that I wasn't socializing. I was socializing by discussing scripture with people. But as soon as I started to socialize, and then oh yeah, I'll have a pizza later on. Yeah, yeah. And there's not, nothing wrong with having a pizza with friends. Mm -hmm. But my my intensity of my of, of my uh, practice fell. It just I mean, and actually, even physically, uh, my I, I got a I got a bit of a cold, and I, I and I actually d directed it right back to, you know, to I I was on a, a real good intensive, you know, sadhana basically. So it, it, if you do get the opportunity, I go, you know, to spend some time in a spiritual place, speak about Krishna, only you know. You know, and because the you can talk other times, you will get time to talk. This is one of my spiritual guides actually, they um, he goes to um, Vrindavan, he goes to um, uh, Govardhan Hill, and they have a little a little place there. And for the whole month, they read hour after hour of Bhagavatam. And this is one of the most active preachers around. It's not that he just sits around and reads Bhagavatam, but for the whole month, they sit they sit and they study Bhagavatam. And they don't. They, they, that's all. That's all they do. They, they speak about Krishna. You know. So that that's something which is really important. It's very good if you can do that. It's not so easy, but it's you know. This is why we have the programs. You know, on, on Thursday and then the following Sunday, is that we're only speaking about Krishna, and everyone's fired up. You know, we're all dancing and chanting. And it's great. You know, the, the Thursday is going to be a fantastic day, and, and we're all preparing. <laughs> this is great. Um, so, uh, and a person is Krishna conscious, I'm going quite quickly here now, Krishna, uh, Krishna says, part of when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and when the mind thus purified finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. So this, this self this is where this this is where the journey the journey within this is a, is a book that's that's written recently by but I haven't read it yet but it's uh, you know you can see this is the actual journey that we have to make this journey within and just just guides and spirits all along the way I have been using the line from Matt Morrison there there is guides all along the way because it's already traversed already it's said that the, the spiritual guides when they cross over the ocean. They leave the boat after them for us to go home. And it will be good for an Israel. Like, <laughs> you know, this is why we got Israel, so we can understand that point. Don't take the boat, leave a boat for something. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's, it's a very important thing that, that, that and once we get in the boat, and uh, the spiritual masters there, the guides, the favorable winds of the Vedas or the instructions in, in Krishna consciousness. So it's there. 
that there is a path and there's a, there's, a, there's an actual process by which we can actually function and actually go into, go into Krishna consciousness. And that's where we'll be happy. That's the real happiness. You know, it's there, like the happiness is there in this world. See, and contradicting what I said earlier about that. You know, it's like being full of misery. But we, this, is the, this is where there is happiness. And this is what Krishna is saying. And this is, this is Krishna's message. And this is the message that we should give to others. You know? This is the one that we can give this message to others. It gives hope. It's real hope. You know? it, it, it's not, it's, otherwise this place is, is, is a disaster. You know? It's an absolute disaster. Um, <coughs> even from a practical example, I'm, I'm doing up my gallery over, over in the Lear Street, 10 minutes walk from here. And the amount of trouble I've had with uh, trying to get different people to do jobs, they just completely tell me one thing and they do the opposite, you know, and they just vanish. They can't get you paid them and they're gone. I said, what? You know, what did you do? You know, did you send this? It's, you know, and you try to get them and they say, okay, sit me now. You know, they don't care, you know. It's like, this place is, is and that's only a small, if you, if you look at this place like in, uh, in Syria at the moment, that's been bombed, like right? they've just been bombed non-stop. You know, this is misery. This is heavy misery at the moment that's going on. So, but still, our happiness is within. This is where we will get this happiness. And if we can actually discover it and find that happiness, then we'll be able to give it to others. Do you know? We'll be actually able to spread it. People will, will actually notice us. They, they, you know, they will just, they will actually get nourished. They, they don't, you don't know why, but they will be attracted to be in touch with the body. Because the body is happy, and people want this happiness. Now, they're looking for it everywhere else. I mean, some of the stores, people going to this nightclubs, bars, casinos, you know, God almighty, you know, spending literally tons and tons of lack of money, and they're intoxicated. They don't know, don't know what went on the day before, but they know I had a good time, you know. But they were probably the biggest Egypt in the planet, you know, you know, and still, they're not aware, they weren't aware of it, they thought they had a great time, being a big fool. You know, but I, I'm, 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 you know, anyway, I, I won't, I won't go into my own past. Uh, but it's in, in 56. It's a really, really good um, point here because Prabhupada, I just, got, I'm going to be really quick here because one is not disturbed by the threefold miseries uh, uh, and this, uh, elated. Uh, this, this is the threefold miseries, or elated when there's happiness, because we will get there is happiness which comes from the material. Be very, very careful. Don't be, a, don't be a um, uh, killjoy. But just be observe the happiness. Don't think, oh, I'm happy now. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you know, no, no, I'm the happiest person. You know, I, you, the illusion is unbelievable. But um, but just to see it for what it is, because it would go again. And is free from attachment, fear, and anger. It's called a sage of steady mind. And probably this at this purport, 56, it talks about the stitcher movement. Um, and this, this is a, this is a formula. This is we were talking about spiritual techniques. This is a formula for spiritual life. Is that if if good things happen to us, generally when when someone something good happens to or someone does something good, it says well yes it, it was uh, I, I was I was I I I I I, I, I. <laughs> it was me. I'm just a great person. That's why good things happen to me because I'm brilliant. You know. Um, that's that's generally the tendency, but a devotee will say that um, uh, a devotee will say that actually this is only due to Krishna, his kindness. I really should have I shouldn't have anything like happiness, but somehow or other Krishna so merciful he's giving me this this happiness. That's his thing. And the opposite is when something bad happens, if something bad happens, somebody says, It was his fault, it was her fault, she did this, he did this, you know, they blame it on everybody else, you know. But a devotee actually thinks, I really should get so much more than, than I'm getting, actually. I should get more because I'm such a, you know, this is the position of humility. You have to just, and it's something you can't force this. This is something that you have to realize, that I should really get more because I'm, I've been such a rascal. I've rejected Krishna for millions of lifetimes. I've, I've somehow or other just completely left Krishna. I'm my greatest friend, the person who's been giving me everything, I just rejected him. I rejected this person, you know, I did it, you know, I should get so much scorn and terrible things happening to me, but Krishna's only given me this as a token, only this little amount, that's the, that's the mood in which we take it, that's, 
that's how we actually, th these are kind of cults, or Prabhupada's cults and spiritual techniques, that that's, what, that's what we should be aiming towards. If, if we don't feel it naturally, we should at least know that that's where we should be, you know, and then, and then work towards that, that in your in, in inner development, you know. Not that some great happens to me, oh, great guy, some bad happens to me, it's his fault. You do that, you know. That, that's, that's the material, that's the false signal. And um, we, and then here's, and th th this is, um, if he's happy, he gets grabbed. And, and a person who's in that situation, it's not then that they're very shy and retiring, in a sense. No, the bold, Prabhupada says, you're daring and active. You'll do things, you know, you'll be, you, you'll take risks for Krishna. This is, this is, this, this is the sort of thing that we do. Krishna consciousness. We take risks for Krishna. Um, you know, like we, like we will put on yoga class for Krishna or something. You know, we will, I don't know, we'll just go and do something which, you know, try to somehow or other please Krishna. You know, we'll be, we'll be bold and active. And we put on a beautiful ceremony for Krishna. Some beautiful decorations and whatever. We put on a beautiful play for Krishna. We, you know, we'll do these amazing things for Krishna. That's very inactive. That they, they, that's the mood that we're trying to get into. Um, that, and then this, this is another thing that, and then it doesn't matter, even if the attempt is unsuccessful. It actually doesn't matter if it's unsuccessful. Even. So long as we are at the height of our trying to do anything to please Krishna, that's success. That's, what, that's all Krishna sees. Um, and the other thing is that we have to be steady in our determination. You know, we have to just keep determined to keep on doing it. Determination is probably the most, um, the high, the, the, a clear sign that someone is, 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 is in Christian consciousness actually, is, is, the, uh, is, the, is the steady in their service. That is, that is a big, steady is big, you know, uh, or somebody who's talked, talks about, about doing, uh, or doing some big service, but I think Prophet said it, is steady is big, you know, and, and it's, uh, that's one of the symptoms of, of someone who's in the, um, initiative stage, you know, in the steadiness that they, that they perform this at the service no matter what. You know. And uh, yeah, it's 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 really it's really good. <coughs> uh, so and, and then again I just want to get back to that point about the world that's full of duality. Krishna says, the material world is one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain. So don't forget you will get evil as well. Just just has don't be overawed by it or don't be overawed by it. Just accept it. You're not evil. If the, 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 the world, there's something's going to happen. Neither praising it nor despising it. This is it. Don't despise it. Just somehow or other, you have to be, deal with it. Uh, it's firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. But the, the, real, the steadiness is that you're fixed in the self. Do you know what I mean? That's how you're able to do it. Because you're fixed in the self. You're working on yourself all the time and you're able to see the self, you know, with the, with the pure senses. You see your senses so you can see the self. And that, that will be that steady, you know. And that, that's what the world needs. So then we have the, the example of the, of the tortoise. And um, uh, we have to control according to plan. Um, see, th this is the point is that if you're a servant of the senses, this is the point. This is why the, the tortoise withdraws the, the senses with the shell. Because you don't let your senses go wild, you know. You don't let your senses just do whatever they want to do. And I, I will be, I won't, I won't be humble, but my, my kind of thing which I find difficult to control my senses on is, is in sport, you know? And sometimes there's some, some sporting occasion on that. I'm kind of trying to control my senses. I want to see it or, you know. But it's, no, actually my better, higher position here is that I'm studying Shastra, you know? But, but I you can see the, the you know, the pull. Everyone's got their version of that, like in different ways. I know why some people like, like, what, like to read magazines or want to read the news or whatever it is, you know. There's, everyone has a version, but I'm just giving my one anyway. So it's just what I'm asking. But um, it, it's, um, and it's incredible that the person who's able to deal with it, you know. And, and another, another thing is, and this is Duryodhan Guru who's made the point as well, don't beat yourself up either, do you know what I mean? You know, we've been in this world for millions of lifetimes, okay, you know. And, and it, but I give them as, a, as an example of a horse. You know, if you're trying to control a horse, if you're all the time pulling on the horse, the horse is going to go crazy. You have to give the horse a bit ahead sometimes, and then you know, gradually, gradually, you get more expert as time goes on. You know, you'll be able to control the horse and direct it. So the mind is a bit like that. 
you know, we've got this mind with us. It's almost got a, 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 an un, you know, you know, it's got such power. It's, it's almost like a godlike power that's described in the scripture. But what Krishna says by by practice and uh, by detachment, by uh, regular practice and detachment, and that's what sadhana bhakti means, is that we perform our, our, our spiritual activities. None more so than getting up early in the morning and chanting and hearing. If you can do those two things, you're on the way, you know, and, and you, you're making great, great good. And if you're associating with devotees, exchanging your, your views. I'm going to stop there and I just want to see if there are any comments or questions. Yeah, what would you suggest uh, to somebody to uh, uh, recall his past lifetime? Yeah. And it's totally unnecessary to recall your past lifetime. It's absolutely, Prabhupada never did it. He makes the odd reference to it. It's kind of like sense enjoyment. It's like, you know, it's like an indulgence. You know, you know just, just, just understand that you were born and died and you probably were a rascal. <laughs> You know, that's the best thing, you know, because you're here again this time, you know, you know that, that's the safest position to be in. Because, I, I, you know, you can really go into the realms and I, 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 and usually something that was a princess or a, a king of the previous lifetime, you know, they weren't just sort of like Joe Bloggs, you know, who was, you know, Mr. Ordinary, you know, extraordinarily ordinary, you know, it, it, a lot of it's total speculation as well, you know. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's visionary stuff when Prabhupada said, I remember one time Prabhupada says, so Prabhupada, sometimes when I'm chanting I see this light. And Prabhupada says, don't worry, it'll go away, just keep chanting, you know. You know, it's just, we're just practical, we're, we're, not, we're not into this whole mystery area theory stuff. So it'll just go on forever. No, I'm, I'm not saying that you are, but I'm just that's speaking on that. Yeah, 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 thank you. It, it's just that, it's, it's, it, it is, it is, um, it is, it is a danger, uh, and it's just sense gratification. You know, I am important. What was I in my past life? There was billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of living entities, and you've had billions and billions and billions and billions of lives. What you did in your last one doesn't make much much difference. Just understand, if it, 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 it helps you understand that, yeah, I'm probably a rascal now because I did something in my previous life, then that's good, you know. That, that's, not, that's not a bad one. You know, if you're going to pick one, pick that one, you know. But don't get into the details of it, you know, I was, I was, with, I was with this person. And, you know, you, you build this, you, you, you know, you puff yourself up and think, I was such and such, you know. It's just, it's such, a, it's just not needed. <laughs> um. It's nice, in, in, I think it was in Paris, during the lecture, yeah. some girl was really intense. Swamiji, Swamiji, get, you know, during the question and answer time. Momiji, can you tell me who I was in my last life? <laughs> Prabhupada just ignored. Oh. And then she was like so intense many times. Swamiji, Swamiji. Right. And Prabhupada, at one point, it's not important who you were in your last life. It's important what you're going to be in your next life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really good. No, That's yes. really good. Come on, sir. In your past life, probably you're going to end up in the psychiatric. In the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Sorry. I say you're going back again into your past life, and then yeah. you can't. Sometimes you can't, probably you can't bear it going to end up in the psychiatric hospital. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, in really, really, like for instance, in, in, in some instances whereby there is maybe some sort of maybe mental difficulty, it may, it may have some benefit, it might be able to dis dislodge it. If somebody who's expert and knows what they're doing can, can, you know, can help a person. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not just completely, completely turning it out, but, but in general, just, it's, it's, you know, better to be extraordinary, just ordinary. You don't, you don't need it, you know, that's, you know, in Prabhupada's example. But, you know, if, uh, if somebody can help somebody else with that, that may be a bit of benefit, but the tendency is that tend that people tend to think, oh, this is the important part. It's not the important part, you know. Yeah, the important part is yeah, is acting present now and the future we shall call. And that's uh, like the Taco said, you know, don't dream about the past and don't or don't think about the past and don't dream about the future, but act in the present and in the future we shall call, you know. So that that's um, is there any any other any other comments, any other questions?
So we should become daredevils for Krishna. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. it. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should. Daredevils. We should. We're daredevils. Yeah. Daredevils. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it was And we've nearly finished. The, the only verse that I didn't say is he, like just before you just before you go this the most the most important verse is the last one. I didn't I didn't I didn't highlight it, but it's this one. Though the embodied soul may be restricted from its sense enjoyment, but the taste for sense object remains. But ceasing such engagement by experiencing a higher taste. In other words, if we get the higher taste of spiritual life, then we won't bother about the higher taste. You know? That's the thing. Mm. This room is the last time that we had, you, you, you were pushing to have a six hour cure time. That was the higher taste, and it was, it was amazing. Everyone really. You should do a quick sprint. Everyone is asking for it. What's quick? Everyone is asking for an cure time. Oh, yeah. The spring one? <coughs> yeah, definitely. We had to do that next one. Yeah. Because cause that's, that's experience of the higher taste, you know. And, and I think that's, that's where we could be daring and active, actually, in creating. And ways in which we praise Krishna. You know, we have the Abhishek, we have the Pope, we have the Kirtan. Drama is a, is a, is a very great way to, to, to please Krishna. But we have to make the, the higher taste, you know, in that sense. And then we won't be worried about the other things. We won't want to go to the pub, not that we do anyway, but, you know, we won't, we won't want to mix with that whole, that whole thing. And we will create, you know, a very beautiful situation, you know, in that sense. And then people will become attracted to this, you know, and, that, and then they will be happy. You know, that, that's what we're trying to do. I have a real question. Why is... Uh, why is Thanks for this. Uh, what do you mean with the... Mm, the night for being... Of, this time of awakening for the self-control. Yes. This time of awakening for being is night for the introspective stage. So mm -hmm. why is the night so... Um, so... Um, favorable for the introspection? Uh, could you just read the first line again? Yes. Yeah. Sure. So it is said here, what is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-control. And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective stage. Yeah, I, 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 I don't... Uh, you can take a literal meaning, but the, also the other meaning is that... Uh, uh, that um, you could you could make the point that early in the morning is, is is the night. You know what I mean? It's early in the morning, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. That's when the introspective stage is really working because the, the moans are finished. You know, the moans are not happening anymore. It's it's a much better time to focus on spiritual life. But it's also to do with when the sense enjoyment going around. That's when the the, the introspective stage. He withdraws his limbs within. The, he doesn't get involved. He's like the tortoise. He brings his his, his limbs within the shell. You know. So just you know, mixing the analogies in that sense, and then when there's when there's lots of sense sense enjoyment going on, or sense, people are just trying to enjoy separately from God, you know, you just don't get involved, you know, and but when when there's spiritual activities going on, and uh, you you won't find many people coming to them because they're 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 more interested in drinking in the over bar next door or eating McDonald's or whatever across the road, you know what I mean? Yes. And, not that we're setting ourselves up high as being judgmental of people. We're very, we're very, you know, we're just trying to make things that people can be happy in that sense. And um, that's where that's where our goal is, and that's what we should always be thinking of. And um, but you know that that we're not that people don't come to to this session. That's 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 the night for them. They they're not coming to the you know, to the yoga world, not coming to the kirtan, they're not coming to the, you know, the, the discussion about philosophy. Because this discussion is, 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 is topmost, you know, we're discussing about Krishna. That, that's the highest, that's the highest subject matter for discussion. We're not, we're not discussing about Putin, Gorbachev, um, Trump, Obama, we're not discussing those subjects. Leo, Brian Khan, you know, we're discussing about Krishna. That's the highest topic for discussion, you know. So that's that's the day, that, that's the daytime, you know. Whereas that, that other that other stuff is all temporary stuff, you know. In the, in the face of eternity, we're also we're also insignificant. But they, everybody thinks they're important. That's what this world is for. That's why it's created in that way. Thank you for those those kind of questions. Okay, I think we have to stop. It's half eight.
and Bhagavad Gita teams. Right.